Hi, everyone. I will uh, uh, try not to uh, keep you very long, even if uh, legal aspects is an uh, endless subject. And uh, because we are uh, before lunch, uh, we should uh, um, finish uh, just in time. Um, my name is Christian Driga. I'm a lawyer and also a executive director of an NGO um, regard, uh, doing research in the field of cybercrime and uh, um, electronic evidence and cybersecurity. And um, uh, this presentation is uh, mostly about usual aspects we meet on. Uh, the ethical hacking uh, activities. Um, and uh, I will actually start with some real life questions for you. Uh, do you think that uh, poor protection of a computer system or data deserves to be exposed regardless of the consequences? Anyone? Um, Sorry. Disclosure, yes, or publicly exposed, presented in uh, events. Well, if what if a company does not respond to your uh, to your uh, call regarding uh, the vulnerability you have dis discovered? Uh, do you think uh, the vulnerabilities should be? Uh, published anyway yes okay uh, and the last one when you get hacked do you feel the need to strike back how many of you have been tempted for about this one <laughs> okay now we will go to preparedness questions. Preparedness uh, in uh, meeting the law, uh, the legal consequences. Uh, so, um, has anyone read the, actually the criminal law provisions on cybercrime from our criminal uh, law code? No? One, two? Okay, so. <laughs> but, uh, and, how long are the, is the chapter on legal aspects in uh, ethical hacking manuals? Actually, I, I haven't managed to finish reading uh, such a manual, so I'm asking you. <laughs> Did you see uh, legal aspects uh, in... Uh... Okay, I will not ask the third one. In uh, the ethical hacking activities, do you feel that the legal system offers in enough protection for you as security researchers? No, it's a general answer. Okay, let's see where this comes from. You see, we have technology and we have law. Technology in year 2000 when the basic law, the Cybercrime Convention was uh, issued, uh, was mostly uh, desktops, laptops, bulky systems, and of course the networks and the internet. Technology has evolved tremendously in 16 years. We have Internet of Things causing a lot of problems right now. We have cloud computing and information systems actually are everywhere in, our, in every aspect of our lives, and uh, they are vital. And vulnerabilities are actively exploited everywhere and hunted. Um, and they have actually good prices from uh, on the black market. And also, in relation with the IoT especially, we have irresponsible companies uh, not uh, willing to offer support or not responding even to any notifications regarding uh, security vulnerabilities. Also, uh, they are abusive 
through the uh, end user license agreements and uh, usage, usage terms in, in the sense that they assume no responsibility whatsoever for the losses you may suffer or the problems you may have if you use the device you buy from them and which actually contains an information system. During all this time, the basic law defining cyber, uh, cyber crime offenses and widely and uniformly adopt, adopted in many countries right now has not evolved. If nobody in year 2000 could uh, envision that an information system will become this small or it will be inside any device at home and a TV and, and in the fridge and so on. This creates a problem also uh, from, from the law enforcement perspective if a crime is committed through uh, using, for instance, uh, a fridge, do they take it for uh, forensics? How, how do they manage this? So many IoT devices infected right now and uh, participating in, uh, in uh, crimes against uh, other computer systems. How can law enforcement intervene? At the same time, the convention defining all the, um, the main um, offenses defines illegal access to information systems, uh, which is uh, crucial in uh, finding vulnerabilities today when it's almost impossible to uh, find every vulnerability if you don't get help from the uh, from the others the company has simply no way of uh, finding by itself uh, all the problems that it created through uh, bugs in programming or other uh, uh, bad uh, configurations. So one reality that changed changed is that we need um, a way to be legal to access systems in order to test them. The judicial system on the other side, I mean the courts, the prosecutors, are still learning the basics of IT technology. So if you bring a, a case to a court right now, at least in Romania, where my experience comes from, in various parts of the country, you'll find very uh, different or even very little understanding of the notions involved to determine if a technical fact has which legal consequences. We, we, we know that from the difference between a zero and one in an information system, someone could be convicted or not, but the courts have great difficulty in understanding uh, this and uh, pinpoint the exact uh, information relevant to take a, to make a decision. So I already mentioned this: uh, the growing need to redefine some of the uh, offenses, of the criminal offenses and cybercrime related, at least the illegal access, in order to enable somehow ethical hacking. I'm not saying eliminating uh, the incrimination but offering some uh, legal protection in the interest of security research and uh, identifying uh, and contributing to the greater good through such uh, uh, technological testing of the systems. This brings basically us to the last of the 
uh, preparedness questions. Feeling secure with the law. And uh, right now, the law and the legal, the judicial system uh, is, uh, brings m quite a lot of insecurity for the security researcher. When we uh, do ethical hacking, we have too many laws to take into account. The criminal law, the criminal procedural law, which uh, may provide us some ways of getting out of an investigation, but we have to know that. Copyright laws, I remember a case, if I'm, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, with Sony PlayStation uh, and uh, the police uh, uh, getting all the equipment of the guy who uh, rooted the, the device because copyright law uh, stated that uh, they are still the owners of the device even if he bought it. This is another very interesting aspect. The society has still no uh, idea that when you buy this device, only the electronic equipment is yours, usually. And uh, the, But the software inside might still be the property of uh, the manufacturer, which is uh, very important uh, to take into account when uh, trying to hack the device. Data protection laws. This is another pain for the uh, legal for, for the security researcher because, for instance, in Romania, the law states that testing an equipment or a software for uh, security problems uh, should not should not be done on live systems having actual uh, personal data on them forbidding this basically forbids us to test any live website which has for instance cli a client list and their emails it is a, 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 an aspect to to take into account um, at the same time, uh, entities processing that uh, personal data uh, have obligations to notify um, if they have uh, data breaches. Uh, right now, in, under the old law, uh, it's still an obligation only for the communication provider, assistance providers. But uh, soon, uh, under the new European regulations, with, it will be mandatory for every entity processing personal data to notify. Well, in this case, how do you, for instance, hire an ethical hacker, uh, hire him to, to, to test your systems? Basically, with the other provision that no personal data should be on the system, uh, you have to set up separate system, a clone, just to, to make the test. Otherwise, the entity risks and under the new regulation, the, the fines are very, very high for, uh, for uh, uh, data breaches and uh, not notifying, for instance. Well, another aspect of the law of the legal system which we need to have legal security is the predictability. Similar decisions in similar cases which right now in our legal system at least no, it does not happen. Previous judgments do, do not count if they are from uh, lower courts, only from the high court of justice. And also in the judicial system I have met in, uh, in my experience a lot of misunderstandings. For instance, we have the provision in the criminal law code, code uh, punishing uh, the usage and the uh, procuring and the distributing uh, software programs, passwords, and uh, other uh, uh, zero days, <laughs> and uh, uh, in general information that could help or could be used in 
uh, committing a crime, in a cyber crime offense. So, if uh, and this is an aspect relevant for you using and having all those tools and testing all those, for instance, malware and stuff and all that stuff. But I have met in court the situation where the prosecution, in a case where someone used for child pornography a um, uh, file sharing uh, program, uh, they deemed it like being uh, illegal. And the court did not understand that that software was in fact legal. So that client had not only the child pornography uh, offense committed, but it was added to it, the illegal uh, usage of uh, software. And also, one, prob one other problem is the technical no knowledge needed in the IT cases. Uh, and uh, relying only on technical experts uh, is not enough. Uh, the courts need training in order to understand the IT no notions. All this gives a pretty worrying uh, picture of how protected we are when we uh, act in the field of ethical hacking. So, what can be done? <laughs> Shall we go home? If uh, a relative of mine, uh, oh, it, it was always he was always saying to me that, after consulting me, that if you want to not to do something, ask a lawyer. He will find ton, tons of motives and dangers to to uh, give up any idea you, you might have to uh, to do something. But still, what can we do? How? Uh, First is the paperwork and keeping evidence. If you do uh, ethical hacking, penetration testing, this is very, very important. Second, if you are an employee, there are some rules you have to follow so that you do not uh, receive a, an order from the boss to do something that actually might he might, might also in the end charge you for uh, or file a complaint against you it is advisable if the legal system cannot and it's the harder it's the harder to adapt cannot uh, get to the same speed with the advance of technology it is advisable that we at least try to see what's in those provisions about cybercrime, how they are usually uh, interpreted. So a little bit of hacking of the legal language and the logic behind that uh, does, not, uh, does not hurt. Actually, it may help very, very much. And then we as a community, we can contribute and help the judicial system evolve but for this, we have to get together to reach out because it's, uh, security research is a profession. It's something that needs protected by the law. It does uh, good for the society. So this uh, requires uh, some establishing some links and some common views on uh, how the legislative could help, how the authorities could help. And I will come to, the, to this one uh, with the public recognition in a moment. So, paperwork and evidence, just in short because uh, time's running out. Bulletproof your contracts. There are so many aspects and I've seen penetration testing contracts with on only half a page that cannot protect you. If you put there that uh, the client takes full responsibility for, uh, for any consequences, it's not enough because you don't know what the client understands from that. So you have to define the terms in the contracts so that 
he cannot say, oh, I didn't know about that. You have uh, also to assess every method that you will use, all the tools that you will use, and how will they be used. I know this makes a lot of paperwork, but uh, he cannot claim and, uh, um, and uh, authorities cannot uh, go against you if you had agreement from the client to use those tools. Um, and the first one which I passed, assess all the systems that will be accessed. Find the real owner of the systems. You do not uh, test uh, a server if uh, the server itself, if it's on shared hosting, the website is on, on a shared hosting because you affect actually the, the provider of the hosting, not the client who has only an account there. You know, you can test only the scripts on the, in that account if you, if you have agreement for um, uh, testing uh, for cross-site scripting or other, other things, but you do not go with other methods that could affect the server. It's, it's uh, so depending on what's the, what is the purpose of the, of the penetration testing, you have to assess all the systems that could be affected and find the real, real owner. Because even if your client says, well, this is my server, and he doesn't know very much, and uh, in the end, uh, they, were, they were just on a shared hosting account, he cannot, uh, you are responsible, not the, not the, not your client for, for, for that. Okay, at the actual testing, the safest is to stop once you have proven the first vulnerability, that there is an entrance. Do not go beyond that unless it's written in the contract because anything else you might find, including personal data of him, his employees, I don't know, is uh, um, give the right to third parties to sue you and also sue him. But anyway, so, and of course, take evidence of every, and document every step taken uh, in any way you can. This is most important because if you acted in good faith with the, the agreement of the, the of the client, in the end, uh, you have to prove that the authorities will not believe you only because you say that. So document everything you do, and if you disclose, keep in mind that publishing still has risks from third parties affected. You remember uh, it was quite recent the. Volkswagen case, when they did, did, when it was discovered the vulnerability in the chips from the car keys, uh, the maker of the uh, chips was notified. He did nothing. They wanted to disclose it, given an amount of time, and Volkswagen intervened and uh, stopped it because uh, it was. Uh, tried to stop it because it was affecting uh, all his clients until that moment, hundreds of thousands of cars. Okay, I already said that. Try to read the provisions in the law. Try to find out how they are interpreted by the, by the, by the courts. Do not hesitate to ask a lawyer for that. Because, for instance, uh, the access means entering the whole or a part of a computer system or network, no matter the method. Unlawful means that in, uh, it's without authorization, which in turn translates as get authorization from the right person to do that step. Courts and the prosecution also takes into account the, in, the real intentions and the motive so you need those proofs. And also the immediate results of the offense. What damage has been done? 
try to minimize the damage and to link to this the criminal uh, procedural code has uh, gives the possibility to the prosecutor if you prove all that all that from the previous slide that uh, he can drop the charges if there is if he finds there is no public interest for prosecuting you further given the small importance of the uh, actual crime committed and this one actually helped a lot of one of my clients uh, they take into account the person of the suspect or defendant their conduct previous to the offense this means and my client uh, happened to be uh, someone who had previous presentations even here he was publicly known the cybercrime unit from our uh, police knew him they were actually uh, in the sense that they, they knew his work um, they were actually fans of him <laughs> which uh, made them believe him when he claimed he, he did not uh, try to do any to commit any crime and of course with the help uh, of the lawyer he also proved the rest of the the actually uh, what he did so get public recognition next year's be on the stage it's very very important if you continue in this field to get some um, to, to get to be known also if you are doing participating in bug bounties get and keep records letters of thanks from the companies you have helped anything because it's very important to uh, that the prosecutor sees who you are that you are a white hacker that you are trying to do good and this proves your previous conduct in the in the field these are other aspects and i will uh, close with this uh, if you are an employee do only what fits the job description if somebody asks you to do something through a computer which may be a, some offense anything try to confirm to have the written agreement i uh, i there was a case of a journalist who also built up the initial site for the for a, for a, uh, his uh, uh, newspaper and uh, but he that didn't have in the job description the um, system administration uh, duties and when somewhere later he approved a, a comment that did not uh, like um, wasn't liked by the the owner of the newspaper he accused him of uh, illegal access uh, and he had to prove somehow to the prosecutors that he had the right to actually modify those pages there were in the end he got only a fine but he was considered guilty because he did not have everything was verbal in inside the, the all the orders he had received to actually maintain the site and, and of course the other employees did not want to get into his defense fearing for their jobs so they did not testify that he was actually the guy doing uh, maintaining the, the website uh, daily this is quite logical I think if you get hacked do not hack back preserve the evidence document the case and file the char charges and uh, the last one is what I told you about getting together and uh, demanding what's needed for you to do uh, your ethical hacking profession demand amending the laws help the judicial systems reaching common definitions in the laws try to reach out and 
help uh, in this one because it's uh, interpreting the terms and understanding them is very different. Uh, an IT guy from a lawyer or a judge. And uh, this one actually is a, an initiative right going on right now. Uh, coordinated vulnerability disclosure policies. One organization is trying to uh, get things moving at um, international level in, in, in this field. Uh, they issue the manifesto, the declaration that which can be it's open for signing by the companies. Ask your companies, ask your clients to uh, rally to that. It's a public declaration that we they will adopt some mechanism trying not to hit you back if you reach to them to uh, announce a vulnerability, but uh, rather they will create some mechanism to see if, it's, if the bug confirms and uh, uh, coordinate eventually with you if you want to publish about it after they will they have uh, uh, have uh, solved it. So this is it. Well, I, it's five past one. Hi. Um, my name is Maxim Olympia. I'm working in the information security field. What uh, attracted me the most? This has the first question slide, the last one, but maybe the one before that. You mentioned that uh, we should uh, help the system evolve. I uh, speak somehow uh, knowledgeable of the fact that the lawyers and IT guys are like two separate, have separate views about yes, the indeed. technical part. But as a f first step, in this direction, what could be like make a petition? Because you know this this, this uh, cyber crime law that is pending approval for like four years. Okay, it's very debated. What can we do to help it reach common definitions? Well, like for instance, this initiative trying to get some legal provisions for. Uh, vulnerability disclosure the same you can uh, through uh, civil society organization organizing yourself can uh, try to uh, reach out to the to the government and to the relevant authorities and publish what should be actually from the technical point of view uh, the reality that that would be that should be taken into account. It's not an easy process, but what I see, uh, what I've seen in the last 12 years, is that uh, the two systems, IT and the law, are going apart. Nobody trying to to reach out and uh, and at least have a common understanding. If the law and the judicial system, uh, maybe it's harder for them to, to make the first steps. Perhaps you, which are much younger and much more, and very much mobile than them, can reach out and, uh, and uh, uh, try to, uh, to make them see the real needs that, that the society has evolved and the law should reflect the evolution of the society. Thank you very much. One last question. I have no law formation, but what is the thing I can do? Like uh, join an NG, uh, yes. NGO, maybe this, make one uh, professional I would society. That. Okay, thank you. Please. Oh. There, there was also a question there. Oh, okay. Hi. Um, so my question is, um, I've seen uh, you're uh, within the Cybercrime Research Center in Romania. Um, have you heard of uh, Romanian Center of Excellence, CyberX? Yes. Yes, uh... okay. Um, well, besides that, uh, we did some workshops 
in there for judges and prosecutors. And we are trying our best to get that level of knowledge in IT, uh, basically, you know, to uh, get there to um, make them understand the zeros and ones. Okay. Um, have you done any workshops or maybe we can partnership somehow? I, because it's very important to do such activities and invite all of them yes, in this field. In, indeed. And um, for uh, several years, I was a uh, trainer at the conference that took place in uh, Telgujiu on the continuous uh, formation of judges. And, um, but from what I know, from the uh, at least for the for the magistrates, that continuous formation is optional. Like the, the theme that you can you can uh, you 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 can choose. From what I understood, where to go. So, uh, and also at the uh, National Institute of Magistracy. There is, from what I know, no uh, training, for initial formation on, 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 on this. Uh, in my view, uh, of course, um, I am, and I was always open to, to, to cooperate, because uh, uh, trying to teach in, uh, in court, in the actual case, the whole notions needed, it's uh, uh, hard to do. Uh, so, yeah, of course, uh, anytime. So, um, how much is European law or European legislation or the European uh, lawmaking process uh, influencing the situation in Romania? And would it not be, or how interesting would it be to influence European legislation instead of Romanian? Okay, that, that, um, all the legislation in Romania should be within the framework of the European law. Uh, new regulations are implemented once they come out from the European law, but get, getting the reverse process, um, well, this is uh, something that uh, authorities should, uh, should uh, gather from the realities of, of our country and what's needed and eventually propose uh, the changes. Uh, I have no, uh, no experience on these mechanisms, so I cannot uh, elaborate on that. But it's uh, part political will, part having the right information, which means getting all together. And uh... OK, cool. Um, hi, I have two questions. One, do you see in the future in Romania an institution that will uh, demand from IT companies to um, continuously test the security of their software product that they develop? Well, uh, uh, are you familiar with the NI NIS directive? No. Uh, it's a directive right now regarding uh, regarding cer certain security requirements from uh, essential service providers and uh, public service providers. I don't, I don't know exactly the term. Anyway, uh, online services, digital services. Uh, this is something coming from the EU, which uh, actually... Uh, in, uh, in enforces some of uh, these uh, some continuous testing and uh, adopting uh, adapting strategies and so on the rest of the market uh, until now only that if we have we will we'll have uh, the cyber security law adopted which until now it wasn't a success it might be possible but i don't i don't see it like forcing but rather through other mechanisms like uh, having standards for being able to, for instance, participate in uh, public procurement and to, to, to make contracts with the state. For instance, this 
would be a way that um, so currently the law doesn't demand from a company that develops products to make them secured but in case a breach happened and uh, the clients have some issues i mean with that the company can be sued and the, the law can be used uh, against I, it i forgot about the the data protection laws which require you to protect the law to take technical measures uh, physical uh, measures etc uh, but uh, in the end uh, so, so you have only on the on that basis if you process personal data you already have some obligations to do it and there are fines for not doing it if you lose the data if you have uh, if the data is compromised uh, you can be sued not by the state as a company but by your partners your clients you can lose market share and so on depends on on the magnitude of the problem okay any other questions or uh, okay from my part uh, there is any legal authority where you can pre-register a penetration contract uh, okay pre register the, uh, penetration contract for example in the case of firm and uh, uh, people you have something for the firm but if you want to make a penetration contract from another individual so you just write a paper but if you don't go to if you, uh, let me try to rephrase if if you uh, for instance uh, get someone from this room able to do penetration testing and you you as a company make a contract with him as a company, as as a individual, so maybe we are friends, and uh, you are not a company, but you have a personal website, and you want a security audit on that website. Okay. So contract so, between two persons. Exactly, but without need to go uh, you, to. You, you don't. Uh, it's a civil contract. You, you you don't need to register it somewhere. You you need to have the the the. Uh, to have it actually, to have the real, real signature, I, 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 I don't well, know if, if it can be a, a register of the all, all the penetration contracts made. You know that that's called, those contracts uh, would have to be in copy there. So, uh, but they are, they contain private information like what systems should be accessed, where what are the means, and so on. I don't think it can be in uh, in in a way in, in which you can you can register it. It's an understanding between two persons, They're the law between them, the contract. <laughs> so you're not hungry? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, let's say uh, things uh, go bad and uh, now we have problems with the law, the client probably sues us. So uh, it's no longer a uh, a talk with the client now it's uh, a talk uh, with uh, the law enforcement and uh, those guys uh, shows up at, uh, at uh, your door or they call you in their office so you give them explanations now uh, i know the first thing you should get your own lawyer but uh, i mean uh, can you use anything to protect yourself like encrypt your data like uh, not uh, disclosing your passwords uh, okay and the, any uh, stuff to them uh, I mean, uh, can they enforce you uh, to give... Uh... No, they cannot, but and you also have as a defendant the right for, to silence until you get to the trial. Okay. But, uh, this, uh. Is, this is guaranteed also in the uh, codes. So, uh, and from what I know right now, you cannot be forced to unencrypt, but this refusal could be taken into consideration. Uh, well, can, he refused to cooperate. Yes. C can they prosecute you for that? If they find no evidence that you committed, it's only the complaint and there is no evidence. <laughs> well, I don't see how it could hold in court, but uh, if there is some, if there is some credible evidence and you did not want to give the rest, uh, then uh, this will uh, will hold in court, and it will count. It, it will count also that 
you have refused to cooperate because uh, on the criteria to uh, establish the punishment, there is the uh, component of uh, uh, the defendant's behavior prior the committing the crime, during the investigation, and trying to repair, and so on. So everything in your uh, in what you, from what you do counts and should count at least under the the law. But I, I mean, uh, we we have a couple of cases like uh, Dan Shova uh, that uh, attempted to delete data and destroy uh, the hard drives, and also uh, in the case of Collective with uh, those uh, fireworks administrator trying to delete uh, the content of the hard drives with the contract. Okay, that's destroying the evidence and. Well, at least uh, I think uh, this can be detailed better at, uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> at okay. lunch because it can be a lengthy discussion. Hi. Hi. Okay. So, uh, first, uh, regarding the uh, what you mentioned uh, in the presentation regarding that you need to put in the contract every single tool or any license that uh, not only methods you are uh, you said that and also the tools the you clients, use the yeah. client uh, for example let's say uh, the client use a Oracle database or Microsoft uh, or a server with a license from Microsoft that he doesn't own because it's a license. It's only have the right to use, not, he's not the, the okay. owner of the software. So basically, you need to specify in a contact of pen testing, every single element that uh, will go in the yeah. scope of the contact. If the problem, some, just, just a moment, let me, let me uh, clarify the question. Uh, the, my question is, uh, for example, if you are doing a black box testing, that means you're supposed to not knowing anything about his infrastructure. Uh, okay. How you can mention that in the contract because you you are not supposed to know about what what he has in in the in his infrastructure. This is the first question, and the second is regarding the uh, uh, law of uh, disclosure of private personal data and the data breaches. Uh, yes, but uh, the Romanian authority that uh, that forced okay. companies to register and there is a okay. uh, the, uh, there uh, also uh, you said that you must pen test on a testing testing environment. This is kind of completely unuseful because you don't test the real infrastructure and. Uh, yeah. And the costs for duplicating it are are, are, are high. It, yes, it's, it's kind Indeed. of you need you are obliged you are obliged uh, to uh, assess the security, but you are not allowed to assess the security. Okay, the uh, the, the data protection authority uh, actually issues a lot of decisions that uh, clarify situations. Maybe. Until right now, it's exactly like I said. You then, you, you, uh, the tester of a program should not access uh, personal data on that in that program. Only anonymized data. This is the requirement. Okay, but maybe reaching to them and uh, specifying the uh, direction of uh, security research, something like that. I don't. It, we can work and find some. Maybe they could issue uh, some exceptions because the law forbids everything and they issue decisions through which they establish a lot of exceptions. Yeah. And uh, regarding the black box uh, testing, sorry. Um, right now, I, uh, without knowing at least if the system is really belonging to my client and I do not affect others, I personally, I don't advise testing. It's my 
Because the, but it, I'm a lawyer. I find uh, I find uh, difficulties and problems, and I warn about them. <laughs> so. so. Um, okay, we it's have. Very... Uh, sorry, we have one last question. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Good talk. First. So the question is, how do we make all these talks that Sorry. help? Yeah, can you hear me now? OK. How can we make all these talks that keep going over and over again about the challenges that we have with the Romanian law regarding cybercrime, which is extremely vague and ambiguous? How can we actually start fixing this? You have close to 1,000 people around here who may or may not uh, be willing to help. How can we? How can we make things happen? Because right now I've seen, I've actually read cases where cyber criminals manage to remain free due to errors made by uh, prosecutors. And at the same time, you have all those researchers over here who may be willing to help the Romanian government secure infrastructures, but they feel they may be punished by the law just because they try to ping Okay, Basically, this is, this is the reality right now. If I ping a, a server from STS, yeah. I'm uh, I'm gonna be in trouble. Not more than that. If I if I want to, most certainly you, you will have at least charges pressed for for that. Uh, well, um, first of all, build up a collection of the problems like in an organization uh, organized fashion. Tailor it for the, the different. Identify the authorities where you, you have you should go. Judges, prosecutors are willing to 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 be connected with the with the with, with what's happening in reality. Uh, but uh, a single person going and saying something cannot count. Right. You have to. Uh, Format the uh, gather and format the information for 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 the particular audience. And uh, regarding uh, trying to pen test the server, well, this is uh, like you said, uh, it it is a problem. This this is why maybe we need some amendments, some provisions regarding the purpose of doing such research. That could that should be taken into consideration when uh, in an investigation. Also, keep in mind that authoriz uh, auth unauthorized access or authorization means usually specific agreement from the owner. And uh, second, uh, it comes from it, it can come from the law. Touching a military installation, it's a different uh, aspect. Coordinated vulnerability disclosure. Try to try to to make institutions adopt that. They will uh, create a mechanism so that you can reach out if you convince them of the utility of this. This is another way. Okay. So okay. what about? I know we're running out of time over here. Uh, wow. What about doing a partnership between the lawyers? which you represent right now over here, and the researchers in order to make those uh, proposals uh, accurate enough to be taken into consideration by the lawmakers. Because well, uh, I you, mean, you mean giving um, a legal touch to, the, to what you gather as uh, technicians? Exactly, exactly. Um, I, I'm sure you can find, uh, you can find uh, lawyers to help out with that. Well, it depends on how knowledgeable of the technical stuff they are but anyway thanks i, I know i know a few that <laughs> then uh, then the solution is to pay them we have uh... pay them to to help <laughs> for money i know <laughs> thank you very much everyone <laughs>